Hello, friends. Welcome to Heidi's Colorful Colorado. I'm your host, Heidi Ganahl, a wife, mom of four, CU Regent, and the founder of Camp Bow Wow and The She Factor. With a passion for keeping the spirit of our state alive and well, I started this podcast to bring the people of Colorado together to celebrate the amazing state we call home. Come along on this journey with me as I travel across our old country roads in my vintage RV, interviewing folks that embody the true spirit of the Rocky Mountains. From the Front Range to the Mile High City to the Wild West of Southern Colorado, we'll celebrate the history, beauty, and Coloradans that make this place the colorful state it is. Each week, you'll meet people trailblazing the way for an even more colorful future for us all, making a huge difference along the way. Are you ready for a Rocky Mountain ride? Let's do this, Colorado. Welcome to Heidi's Colorful Colorado. It's a special day. It's our first live remote podcast in the trailer, which I call Betty Jean now. And we're super excited to be in front of a beautiful mural that was painted by Alex Pangburn. Alex, we're so happy to have you here today. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Tell us a little bit about how you came about doing murals. It's such a neat career. Yeah, yeah. So um, I guess I started my first mural in 2018. I was... um, Um, an artist in the Crush Walls Festival, which is held in Rhino. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that was my first one. And then it literally just snowballed from there. But yeah, it's crazy. I I can't even like fathom the the state of quickness that I've been doing these murals (laughs) in. (laughs) They are gorgeous. Thank you. All right. So were you the kid that was a really good artist? Did you always have this in you? I was like so-so. My mom was an art teacher and we like always grew up doing art. And so it was something that we always had a part of our childhood. Um, but I love doing art. I was always in the art classes and I was definitely an art nerd for sure. What was the career you thought you were going to have? So I actually wanted to go to school to be a veterinarian. Really? So I like went to college to be like a veterinarian and have a degree in animal sciences. So yeah, this whole art thing is like totally uh, from left field. (laughs) (laughs) But I saw that you got your start while you were a vet tech, right? Doing Mm -hmm. pet portraits. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of a cool coincidence, like with Camp Bow Wow. Like we, I mean, as I built that company, the doggy daycare company, um, we had all kinds of people asked to do pet portraits mm-hmm. of the dogs, and it was it was always amazing to me how they were able to keep the dog still or even get a chance to get a glimpse of them long enough to be able to do a beautiful drawing of them. Yeah, but yeah, I I never thought that it would be as lucrative as it was, and so the first year that I did it. I solicited my art. I was like, I would take a dog to the back, take a picture of it, and then do a painting of the dog, and then come back whenever they came back for their recheck appointment and be like, oh, I did this painting of your dog. Like, would you like to buy it? And of course, they'd be like, yeah, absolutely. And then it was just word of mouth. And yeah, it just, I was booked for an entire year at one point. Okay, so you were in Lexington, Kentucky at that time, right? Uh, so no, I was actually in Columbus, Ohio. You were, you yeah, were. Yeah. So how did you end up in Colorado? Um, so my boyfriend is a tattoo artist and he got brought out here to um, work at a shop in Rhino and mm-hmm. asked me to come with him. And I had never been to Colorado, but always had this like romanticized vision of like <laughs> living in the West. And so, um, yeah, came out here and loved it. And I started from scratch, like I had no job, nothing. And so, yeah, it's just like kind of fun to think about how far I've come in three years. <laughs> and that's so. yes, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> how many murals have you done now in the Denver area? Oh my gosh. Um, I think at least 15. Oh my goodness. So yeah. And then I have one in, uh, in Lexington, Kentucky. I went back and did one uh, a couple of years ago. Is that where your family lives? Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. So that's cool. They get a little uh, reminder yeah. of you every time they drive by it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> how long does it take you to do a mural? Um, it really just depends on the size, but I work kind of fast so I'm usually anywhere between like three to five days oh my goodness yeah so it's usually a pretty fast process for me um I was telling Daisha that I'm just like very focused on like what I want to do each Mm -hmm. day and getting it completed so um and then I also have another full-time job so I'm trying to like make sure that I can get it done within the time that I have what do you do for your full-time job um so I work for the Rhino Art District Mm -hmm. and I'm the um the director of curation so I'm working on artist initiatives and art opportunities and working with a lot of the developers and people that are looking for murals or to curate art within their their facilities. So, okay, somebody comes to you, they want you to do a mural. What's the process look like in the timeline? Yeah, so, um, so like some clients, it's super fast. They know exactly Mm -hmm. what they want. They wanna just like let me do my thing and it's super quick. Um, But then there are other clients, they're not really sure what they want. They just Mm -hmm. like my style. So it's a lot of back and forth. I'm working with um, a client right now where we've been working on something for four months. So just trying to get it to the point where 
they're happy with it. I'm happy with it. Mm-hmm. Cause that's really part of it too, is like, I'm doing the art, but I want to make sure that I'm stoked on it too. Yeah. And as well as they are. So what's your favorite mural you have ever done? Um, so I did this mural on the Swiss floral shop, which is in Wheat Ridge, Colorado. <laughs> and it's a mountain bluebird with kind of this like wallpaper floral background. Oh, and it was probably one of the most difficult projects to date for me. Um, I ended up having to use three story scaffolding and putting it together <laughs> by myself. So oh my it was like horrifying. Um, and it took me about a week to do just because of like all of the logistics of trying to get that together but it came out amazing and it's one of my favorites how do you protect the murals once you do them um so most of the stuff that you can spray on it there's a uv protectant that Mm -hmm. you can just spray and that usually makes it last for a few years longer but spray is actually very durable and so um these murals will last anywhere from like eight to ten years really without protection yeah what's next are you going to keep doing the murals around the city or do you how do you want to expand or grow Yeah, so I guess as an artist myself, like this year, um, I'm fully booked up with mural projects so far for the year, which is awesome. So I'll continue to do murals this year. Mm -hmm. And then um, I eventually want to start getting into more studio work. Do you? So, What do you mean? Like doing portrait paintings that you can actually... Yeah, more paintings. Because I feel like I'm getting a good niche in murals, Mm -hmm. but I ultimately want to be able to you know, move wherever I want to and be able to have a studio and work on art and be able to sell that artwork in galleries. So that's kind of like an ultimate goal. I'm not quite there yet, but. (laughs) Well, my dream has always been to have a dog art gallery. So maybe someday I'll commission you to do a piece for that. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I don't know when that'll happen, but. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Okay, so what's your favorite animal that you've ever painted? Oh my gosh. Um, I am really into birds right now. Mm -hmm. Um, I really like the way that my style kind of like translates to their feathers and being able to get the depth and stuff of them. Um, but I have yet to do a horse and I would really love to do a horse, especially with like my love for them. Yeah. Tell so, me a little bit about your background with horses. Yeah. And- um, so I guess I had my very first lesson in Lexington when I was eight years old mm-hmm. and um, I did like hunter jumper dressage. That's kind of what I grew up doing. And then when I moved here, um, I started doing a lot of the trail riding and I just really got into it. So I just got a horse uh, last year and um he's a rocky mountain and he and i just do a bunch of trails around colorado and it's it's amazing oh yeah. nice <laughs> yeah what's his name tino tino that's yeah so and do you still have your dog <laughs> yes so i have benson um he's 13 he just turned Aww. 13 so he's an old grandpa man um but <laughs> <Scruffy> white <laughs> yeah <laughs> very white in the face but uh, he just sleeps and eats treats and yeah Sweet that's man. the life yeah yeah he's <laughs> they living give the life. so much unconditional love though dogs <laughs> and horses right yeah exactly okay so what do you love about Colorado now that you've lived here a few years is mm-hmm. are there a few things that you just light up about about our state yeah um you know something that I never really experienced before was just the amount of support around the art realm mm-hmm. and it's so supported here and I love it and that's probably one of my favorite things but also I'm a very big outdoors person and so I love being like you know riding my horse in the mountains and just doing those trails is epic and then hiking we live in Golden so we're so close to all of the trails and it's just amazing I've picked up fly fishing and (laughs) I'm just like I'm a jack of all trades I love to do all the things so (laughs) that's good especially if you live in Colorado there's a lot to do here I think that's one of the themes we've heard I've I've done about uh, 20 of these podcasts now and Definitely the most beloved thing about Colorado is the ability to do anything you want any day, like whether it's snowing, raining, sunny, there's just so much outdoors, uh, so many outdoor activities. Yeah. Um, Okay. So what do you miss about Kentucky that we don't have here? Yeah, I guess I miss the, which, I mean, I guess this year's different, but I was going to say the greenery this year's (laughs) so green, but um, in Kentucky, it's just like always green and um, just super lush. I was just there a couple weeks ago visiting my parents and we were trail riding out in like Daniel Boone um, because my parents have horses as as well. So, um, so yeah, it was just, it's a different world out there. It's a lot more lush and out here you're really, you know, you have the mountains and um, everything's down low. All the grass is down low here. <laughs> but One of the themes that I've heard throughout these podcasts is that Colorado is a place where you come to live with no limits. Like yeah. you reach for the mountaintops. It's just, you push yourself. Mm-hmm. Have you noticed that since you moved here? For sure. Yeah. For sure. Definitely pushed myself to do a lot of things that I normally wouldn't be comfortable with. Um, but I also feel myself like constantly wanting to like up, up myself like yeah. every day. So. I think that's I think that's accurate for our state. Just the yeah. people here, yeah, and the people who move here. So I um I ask this of every guest: What's the most Colorado thing you've done since you've been here? Oh my gosh, um, it sounds like you've done a lot. <laughs> so you can pick. Yeah. Um, 
it was like right whenever I first moved here, which now it doesn't seem like it's super epic, but it was my very first time in Colorado and we had friends that took us up to just like scale the side of a cliff. And so we like scaled up it and then I like couldn't get down. Oh my and God. so I know, so I thought we were gonna have to like call a helicopter, but I ended up just like shimmying down and I had like hands full of cactus and, oh. um, but yeah, it was just like the most, like it was raw and sketchy. And I just feel like that is like a lot of what Colorado is. It's just wild. Like it's wild out it's here. It's the wild, so. wild west. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I like to say we're rug- it's rugged individualism. It's, yes. It's mm-hmm. like this, that's the spirit of Colorado. Um, all right. So what advice do you have for young aspiring artists to really follow their dream, pursue their passion and be successful at whatever art avenue they want to go? Yeah. Um, I guess there's a couple things, but the main thing is just to like work at it, continue to work at it, continue to find opportunities that feel like serve you as an artist. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, being a creative doesn't mean that you're creative all the time. Like you go through lulls and, you know, you just kind of have to feed that and, and work through it and, you know, just find something that inspires you as an artist, but just to keep working. That sounds great. Yeah. Um, what's next for you? Um, so we have the Babe Walls Mural Festival in July. So that's going to be in Arvada this year, July 15th through the 18th. Okay. Um, so we have 26 artists and we'll be doing 14 installations along um, the Ralston Creek Trail in Arvada. So nice. super excited. We're like getting the last little details together for that festival. And um, we're bringing in five artists from out of state. So I'm really excited to do that. Mm-hmm. How do people learn more about that? Or can they follow you on Instagram and learn about it? Yeah. So Babe Walls. Um, so it's at Babe Walls on Instagram. Instagram and then babewalls.com is our um, our website and so this is Colorado's first and only all female mural festival. Nice. So yeah, girl power. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this will be our second year. Our first year was here in Westminster at the site where we're at today. So Alex, tell us a little bit about this mural that we're in front of. Yeah. So um, this one behind me is a western tanager, um, which is a bird that's native here to Colorado, and you can see around the Front Range. Um, and whenever I first moved here, I saw one and I was like, oh, those birds are epic. I've never seen them before. <laughs> um, and so for my first mural in Crush, I did a, a mural of a Western tanager. And so the clients of this building loved that mural and they wanted me to bring it up here. So I was able to kind of like move him from Rhino here to Westminster. Does he so, like his new home? I think so. <laughs> yeah. Do you like, do you get... A- do you think of a personality when you paint these animals? Like, do you For kind sure. of create that? Yeah. So something that I'm really drawn to in animals is just their body language. Okay. Um, I've trained horses for a number of years and, you you know, voice commands don't really work. It's feeding off each other's body language. Yeah. You're reading theirs and they're reading yours. And so um, their eyes are something that I really pay attention to. So in my murals, I really make a a big effort to try and make their eyes as realistic as possible. So they all have a different personality Mm -hmm. and um, it all shows through that. That's wonderful. Yeah. Okay. So how can people follow you or find you on social media? Yeah. So my Instagram is at Alexandria underscore Pang. And then my website is alexandriapangburn.com. And we'll have that on the website. Yeah. But we're super excited to follow your, yeah, your trails. In fact, you. I like I want a map of all the murals that you've done <laughs> so I can drive my kids around and show them. Yeah, I will do that for you. <laughs> oh, that's great. We'll post that on the website if yeah, you do. But, cool. Well, thank you so much for yeah, being our inaugural you. mobile podcast yes, studio guest. Thank you so much. You this were very patient so this morning as we worked through the kinks, including me dropping the trailer off my neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> you survived, though. That's all that matters. It's the Wild West, so. <laughs> it is the wild, wild west. It makes every day an adventure. So yeah, thank you absolutely. so much and yeah. good luck with everything. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate you as well. Thank you for joining us today on Heidi's Colorful Colorado. If you enjoyed this conversation, don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. And definitely follow me on Instagram to keep up with my latest adventures. In the meantime, happy trails from me, Heidi Ganahl.